Welcome to Her Life Unscripted Podcast, inspiring burnt out, stressed out, and stretched thin women to embrace the unscriptedness of life. Hosted by Anna Osborne. Hello, lovely ladies, and welcome to Her Life Unscripted, episode 81. I am your host, Anna Osborne, and I am absolutely delighted to be here with all of you today. It is a freezing cold, stormy day in Northern California. It is officially the beginning of March as I'm recording this, but we have had the storm system that has come and been giving us rain and snow up in the mountains, and it has been just a godsend because we have had an incredibly dry winter. So we are grateful for the rain, and I'm hoping that I don't lose power during this recording because we have been having some power outages earlier this week. So it is great to be here with all of you, and yeah, it's It's officially March, holy smokes, even though it does not feel like it outside. And one of the reasons I am so excited to be here with you guys today is because it's been a while since I've recorded an episode. I have had um, just a lot of other things going on, both personally and professionally, and I've got two new clinicians working at my office, which is just such a really, really cool thing. As most of you know, I am a licensed psychotherapist, and I've been doing couples and relationship work for 13, 14 years now. So it's been something I've been doing for a long time and I just love the work and I, I believe in the work. I think that when folks start counseling, it can be a very intimidating process and they can, you know, sometimes delay it. Oftentimes they delay it much longer than necessary. And so given my schedule and the other things I have going on, there's only so many clients I can see in a week and my own mental health, right? I think if I saw too many clients, I would lose my passion for it. So I try to be very mindful of that. Well, I, um, I get calls and I can't help people. And that is just one of the worst feelings in the world, especially when part of, of what I want to do in this world is to serve and to help. So being able to add some clinicians to my practice has been really exciting because it means when people call and they, they're in need of support. If I can't see them, I have somebody that is working my practice that is able to, and it just is a very, very rewarding feeling knowing that that call goes, um, it's responded to. It's not left to have somebody, um, you know, call somebody else. So that is really exciting. But the flip side of that is that it's a lot of work having people work for you. And it's taking up a lot of my time and also my creative energy because I'm wanting to really help encourage and develop the clinicians that are working with me. And a lot of that takes creativity and finesse. So it has had me step away from the podcast more than I really had planned, but that is life, right? Go ahead and make plans and and let God laugh. So that is where I have been and what I have been up to, but I'm excited to be here with all of you today. And I want to share about an experience that I had a couple weeks ago that I am going to have be kind of the center focus of our podcast episode today. So I used to do, I, most of you know, I I exercise regularly. I am by no means a fitness buff or, you know, Miss Universe, but I do it because it, it helps me clear my head. It helps ground me. It helps me be more patient and loving to those around me. And so years ago I used to do spin. And for any of you out there that do spin, you know, that when you get back to doing spin, it kind of hurts, right? Sitting on that bike seat for an hour, it's like you got to retrain your bottom uh, to be able to sit for that long. And so I haven't done it for a while. And I had uh, a friend that said, Hey, you know, take this class with me. I said, sure, I'll take it. Well, there's this one instructor who is just absolutely amazing. I mean, this man is one of the most motivating, inspiring individuals that I've had the, the, honor of being able to be in front of. And he's, I I know him in a couple different capacities. He's spoken at different events I've attended, but he happens to be a spin instructor at my gym. And taking his class is kind of this beautiful mixture of going to church, being in a really cool concert club with amazing music that you know every word and you want to sing along to, and also 
being pushed physically and also being encouraged by really amazing friends. Like it's this, I can't even explain this experience of this class, but if any of you come to the Sacramento area and you want to take an amazing spin class, please message me on Facebook. I will, I will get you the information for this class. So he happens to be the instructor on this Saturday morning, right? So sign up for the class, show up to the class. And the second you get there, you just feel the energy that this man provides in the room. So when we're in this class, the music's going and it's amazing. And, you know, we're pushing ourselves and really getting into the workout. And throughout the instruction of the class, he's also kind of taking us through this, this journey, right? Not only within the, the, the climb of the spin class, but also this journey of emotions and of our own level of kind of self care and mental, um, mental health and things like that. And so he just kind of weaves in the story to the class. And as he's doing it, it's really this class focused on gratitude. And, and what are we, what are we grateful for in this moment? As we, you know, our, our breathing is labored and we're sweating and we're really pushing ourselves, what are we grateful for? And he's just encouraging this dialogue as we're riding. And it isn't necessarily dialogue where we've got to shout out an answer, but it can also be this internal process. And part of what he kind of incorporates into this meditation almost is this idea of awareness. And now when I hear about awareness, I automatically think about self-awareness, right? We, we preach self-awareness. I've had clients ask me this question, you know, do you think I'm a self-aware person? Am I able to self-regulate, check my emotions, be aware of my impact on other people, you know, those sorts of things. And, but what awareness he was talking about was awareness of others. And I absolutely loved how he expanded on this because it was something and is something that even weeks later, I'm continuing to reflect on. Because the way that he talked about it was starting with gratitude. What are the, what are the blessings you have in your life right now? What are you grateful for? And it can be simple as running water, as a car to drive your kids to work when it's raining. These things that we take for granted, not what are you grateful for in terms of, you know, your latest paycheck, even though that's something to be grateful for, um, because that's putting money into the bank and a roof over our head. But these things that we take for granted in terms of our bodies, our ability to walk across the kitchen and get a cup of water from a clean water system of being able to jump in the car and pick up your kids from school or drive to work to a job that you get paid for that allows you to put groceries in your fridge and turn the heat on in your house. Like these things, these very basic gratitudes. And then the shift came from now that we have these things that we're grateful for, how can you be more aware of others? If you think about today, who you are going to interact with, how can you be more aware of them? And so as I'm in the spin class, and what's so cool is that you're with other people, but you're also on this very personal journey, especially in the way that he teaches it. And I started thinking about it's Saturday. Who am I going to interact with today? Well, I'm going to interact with my husband. I'm going to interact with my kids. And that was kind of all that was on the agenda, right? I probably was going to see, um, you know, the checker and the bagger at the grocery store. And maybe a few other, maybe stop for cop- coffee and see the barista and the cashier. But that was really it in terms of what my day held. And so all of a sudden, I got this acute awareness of how can I be more aware of them? What are their needs? What are their eyes saying? What's their affect saying? What's their body language saying when I'm interacting with them? And it made me slow down in a totally different way because it had nothing to do with me and had everything to do with them. It wasn't about me being more self-reflective or self-aware or anything like that, but it was about heightening my senses in order to be aware of others. And it really just changed my attitude for the day because it was no longer about what's on my to-do list, what do I need to take care of, but how am I going to interact with others? And so this kind of dovetails to this conversation that I had with um, my hairstylist yesterday. I got my hair cut and we're talking, right? And we're talking about this kind of, 
you know, this village that takes to support households and families, and that in a lot of ways, we've moved away from this community based model. And so of course, you know, I've known my hairdresser for 13 years, I think, uh, gosh, more than that since 2003. So 15 years, I've known her. And we're similar in age, she's a little bit younger than me, we've got kids the same age and things like that. But just talking about, you know, that that there are so many demands on our schedules, whether we have kids or not, whether we're married or not, there are so many demands on our schedule. And that oftentimes we feel so isolated, right? Of who do we ask for help? Are we able to ask for help? Should women ask for help? Or are they supposed to do it all? All these things that get mixed into it, right? And so it kind of started talking about this way that we feel so isolated because we want the village back, like bring back the village, bring back the village that's about supporting and encouraging and building each other up. And so it connected with the spin class so much because it's saying we are in this place of isolation where we forget to be aware of others. We're so focused on our own path and the things that we have to do, check off the list, right? That we forget to not only break that isolation, but be aware of others. And so after I got my hair cut, I went and grabbed some lunch before I um, finished up my day. And I went into uh, Chipotle, I'm sure you guys know Chipotle, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this podcast episode, right? And I'm thinking about this, just this increased awareness of others that came out of the spin class and this amazing conversation with my hairstylist. That sounds so fancy when I say hairstylist, Uh, but I'm just going to say it because we're going to be fancy today. Uh, But this conversation about isolation and, and wanting the village back, and I thought, you know, I'm going to practice this right now, right? I'm going to practice what it's going to be like to be aware of others. And so it's two o'clock in the afternoon and the Chipotle line was like out the door. I'm thinking, what is going on that everybody (laughs) needs lunch at two o'clock? I mean, I'm starving. It's like, what's going on? So I'm in line and I'm watching everybody walk up to the counter and just kind of give their order, right? Like, it's like, oh, I want this. Give me a bowl. Give me a burrito, whatever it is, right? But there's no awareness of others. It was just this very, just bland, cold interaction. And I'm not judging or faulting anybody for what was happening in their, that moment of their lives where they're interacting with that, the the person with that way. But I started thinking like, what happens if I really am aware of others? So I started watching the body language of the people making the food and, and really being able to kind of go, okay, well, how do I want to respond? Right? Because they, they looked so stressed. Here it is in between shifts, the lines out the door. And lo and behold, they've got this online order that came in. That's like, a foot and a half long receipt, right? So they're trying to make that order in between serve all the people that are getting more and more frustrated because this line's long. And so I, I, I turned it on, right? I turned on this awareness of other, and I turned on this ability to just be a little bit more patient because I could see the frustration in their eyes. And I'm not saying that it rocked their world or changed their lives or did anything remarkable, but I left the interaction feeling more fulfilled because I was aware of other. Now, it was two o'clock and I was starving. So there was a lot to be aware of self in terms of physically how I felt and, and how hungry I was. But in that moment, being able to shift over to be aware of other was really, really powerful because I left getting my, you know, my bowl of feeling really great about it and feeling connected somehow to these people. Like the isolation wasn't there. And now I get these are strangers, right? And I get you might be listening to this saying, well, what's the, what's the point, right? Like, so you are kind to the people that are making your food at Chipotle, but it's not about that. It's about being able to break the isolation. It's about being able to recreate the village and the way that we recreate the village, this community that we need around us to rally around us when we are feeling at our worst, when we're feeling exhausted and depleted and emotionally starved, we need the village. And the only way we're going to do that is about awareness of other. And the reason is, if I'm aware of me, and you're aware of you, and the next guy's aware of himself, and so on and so forth, all we're doing is building more islands. We're not connecting, we're not breaking that isolation. And so I really want to encourage all of you to bring back the village to look at the areas of your life that need more connection, to be open to the experiences of connection, to allow yourself to be aware of other just to see what it's going to bring. 
and bring from, from a very authentic way because it, it's not, it doesn't matter if it's fake, right? It doesn't make a difference if it's fake, if you're just being kind, just to make yourself feel better, but really you're slowing down to observe others, to be aware of others, to hear their needs so that we can bring back the village. So I want to hear how this works for you. I want to hear what your guys' thoughts and feedback are on it. But that is my mission, is to bring back the village. And I have so much gratitude for the community of listeners and everybody that is just part of what we're creating, this community of women that are supporting each other and connecting and just doing amazing things, because you guys are a village. And sometimes in the virtual world, that village can feel a little bit more difficult to hold on to. So I encourage you guys to build those connections to, to create virtual and non-virtual connections, to create your village in whatever ways you can that will allow you to not feel so isolated and also to be aware of others. So as of today, I am putting the podcast on hold for a bit so that I can really nurture these two clinicians that are working in my practice and feed energy and, and life into the work that they're doing and the impact they're making on the community that I live in and, and to enhance the village that I have around me. And hopefully that ripple effect will be felt all the way to you. Um, I'm hoping to be back recording probably by summertime. So taking March and April off. Um, but I just wanted to update you guys of that change. I'm sad to be taking a break, but I know it's also what needs to happen right now so that I can be really aware of my village. So I thank you all for your, your listenership <laughs> and just your, your encouragement and your support along the last gosh, two years that this podcast has been going and it is not a goodbye. It's talk to you soon. And if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out to Anna at herlifeunscripted.com. And I look forward to staying connected. Take care, ladies. Talk soon. Want to learn about the latest retreats, workshops, and speaking events hosted by Anna? Head over to HerLifeUnscripted.com to get in on all the juicy details. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure and send in your voice feedback via the SpeakPipe app or to Anna at HerLifeUnscripted.com. We can't wait to hear from you.